I'm just gonna come on. We're ready to go. We're streaming live, and like everybody's out. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you for uh, your patience. We had a closed session and then we had a technical difficulty, but the time is 7.37. Uh, this is the regular council meeting for April 11th. Clerk, can you please do a roll call? Yes. Councilman Bliss? I'm here. Councilman Fleming? Here. Councilor Roback? I'm here. Councilman Soltis? Here. Councilor Wright? I'm here, thank you. Councilor Wright will be back in a minute. As will the lawyer. Um, the invocation this evening will be led by Council Rohrbach. I ask that you uh, stand if you are able, please. Council Rohrbach, the floor is yours. I'm going to read a poem by um, Burl Shane, Better to Light Candles. It is better to light candles than to curse the darkness. It is better to plant seeds than to accuse the earth. The world needs all of our power and love and energy, and each of us has something we can. The trick is to find it, to find it and give it away, so there will always be more. We can be lights for each other, and through each other's illumination, we will see the way. Each of us is a seed, a silent promise, and it is always spring. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, first up this evening, we have the appointment of Toya Aaron. Is that? Okay. So. Ms. Aaron, if you would come up, please. The clerk is going to uh, swear you in. Oh, they begin already. take um, a few minutes to break while um, the administration goes on. So we will start the meeting. We will start the meeting, but we're just going to take a little break. everyone we are going to resume our meeting the time is now 7:45. Um, so first up we have the election of the mayor pro tem what is the wish of council can i get a motion Your Honor. mr soltis uh i'd like to nominate uh, mayor pro tem for uh, mark bliss okay thank you can i have a second is there a second your honor i'll second mr Plumbing, thank you motion has been made and seconded is there any discussion your honor Councilwoman Aaron. <laughs> Although this is my first meeting, I feel that a nomination of Mark Bliss is mere contempt. Do you have, sorry, do you have a microphone? I do not have yeah, a microphone. You do. It's just not plugged up. Hold on, another technical issue. Time out. <laughs> We haven't been using that seat. Ooh. Speaking of IT. <laughs> Don't get startled. 
Although this is my first meeting, I feel that Mayor uh, Mark Bliss, Councilman Bliss, would be a great candidate for Mayor Pro Tem. So I, I feel that with him having a lot of seniority, it will be really good for the council. All right, thank you. Are there any other comments? Your Honor, um, while I do agree that Mark is the most senior uh, person on the council, and I think he'll do a fantastic job as Mayor Pro Tem, I think whether it be by coincidence or by choice, we consistently kind of end up in the same like group of people and same choices. And so while I respect every all of Mark's knowledge, I will be voting no. But I respect him as a mayor, as a council person, but I think that sometimes whether we are, if we aren't intentional, we always end up in the same spots. So I'm going to intentionally say no today. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any other comments? All right, well, um, Mark, I, you know, you and I have had our disagreements in the past, but um, we both want to move the city forward, and uh, I will be voting yes. I think that I think this is good. I'm assuming you want it. I, <laughs> uh, y yes, Your Honor. All right, uh, if there is no other discussion, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against, please say no. No. Aye. All right. Thank you. Motion carries. I believe that was 5-2. All right. Congratulations, Mayor. Congrats. All right. Next up, we have the approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions this evening? All right. Seeing none, we are going to get to the meeting. We have presentations. First up, we have the uh, 2022 National Animal Control Officers Week Proclamation. Mrs. Marsh, do you have a report? Yes, I actually have the, the proclamation, so. Whereas when a call for animal control services is requested, the prompt response of animal control officer is very important for the protection of the human life and the welfare of helpless animals and pets that are rescued from injury, disease, harm, and inhumane treatment. And whereas our animal control officer provides a number of services to this community, including responding to domestic animal calls and complaints, checking the welfare of pets, inspecting pet stores and other animal facilities, catching and returning loose pets, ensuring pets are promptly vaccinated and licensed, investigating complaints on animal bites, responding to calls on wildlife and moving wildlife and other locations for their safety. And whereas animal control officer is a hardworking member of the Madison Heights Police Department and is dedicated to the service and animal control needs in the community, and whereas the week, this week of appreciation recognizes and honors our animal control officer, now therefore be it resolved that the City Council and Madison Heights declares the week of April 10th through the 16th of 2022 as Na National Animal Control Officer Appreciation Week in Madison Heights in honor of the men and women whose diligence, caring, and protections of animals help keep our city, citizens, and animals safe. And Animal Control Officer Justin Holland is here tonight. Um, to accept the proclamation. All right, next up we have the 2022 National Public Safety Telecommunication Week Proclamation. Mrs. Marsh. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services, and whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of law enforcement, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property, and whereas the safety of police officers and firefighters depends on the quality of accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the dispatch center, and whereas public safety dispatchers are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services, and whereas public safety dispatchers are the single vital link to our law enforcement fire personnel by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information, and ensuring their safety. And whereas public safety dispatchers of the Madison Heights Dispatch Center contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their jobs in the past year. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Madison Heights declares the week of April 10th through the 16th as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Madison Heights in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our city safe. And I see Dave Thayer is in the back to accept this proclamation. Next up, we have a meeting open to the public. This is the opportunity for the public to address uh, myself and council. We ask that you keep it to three minutes. Please give your name, any affiliation with the city, address, that type of thing. And with that, meeting is open to the public. Please just come up. And whoever's first. Whoever didn't come up can come up second. Please go ahead, sir. Case number 0062694, court address, 2000 West, 13 Mile Road, Madison Heights, 43rd District Court of Madison Heights. Peter Richard Taylor versus defendants, Rosalind Rafstein, Mayor of Madison Heights, Cheryl Rodman, Joe Longo, Richard C. Taylor, Dennis N. Winkler, W. Burnett Jones, Leo Bowman, Mark Blanchard. Criminal charges violating Amendment 6814 of Constitution, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. Defendants are ordered to appear personally at court address above to testify at legal, speedy, and partial jury of Michigan court address, live people in Michigan, cameras at trial produce defendants false victim of case number 0062694 with names address of false victim of case number 0062694 for Peter case number 0062694 defendants fear to personally appear at court address above to testify at legal, legal cameras trial, make the date time for legal cameras trial for Peter defendants. Rosalind is slave of Cheryl. Karen McDonald can't prosecute. A clerk is Peter Richard Taylor. Rosalind is legally served legal subpoena on public records of Michigan, Madison Heights. That is including this record of April 11, 2022. I dare anybody to lie about it not lie about me now. Thank you. Is there anyone else who has anything to to, uh, to to say this evening? Just hello, sir. Hello. Um, my name is Mike McFall. Uh, I know several of you, um, and I just wanted to come and introduce myself. I'm a current Hazel Park City Council member and Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I'm also a candidate for the new eighth uh, Michigan House District, uh, which includes Madison Heights, Hazel Park a small piece of Ferndale, parts of Detroit, and Highland Park. Um, so I just wanted to come and introduce myself, and um, I will pass out my cards because you can find out more about me on my website at mikemcfall.com. Um, but I, I've been um, active in my community, uh, and I spearhead like our Main Street program, and I know you guys are working hard on your Main Street program as well, um, which it's great because I would love to see the John R. Corridor, you know. So uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I will leave some cards uh, if anybody needs anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak before council this evening? 
Good evening, Vita Palazzolo. 26853 Jan R. Um, welcome, Council. A lot of changes. Congratulations, Councilwoman. And um, I wish you guys all the best on all your new changes and as uh, we all continue to move forward. Um, I have two things very quickly. Um, on the corner of 11 Mile and John R., where the uh, Save a Lot store is, uh, the dumpster um, in the parking lot before the, dump, the dumpster in the parking lot of Save a Lot before you get to the field going south uh, is really torn down and looks ridiculous. Um, it needs, I mean, it just, it doesn't look good for us. That's all I'm saying. So, you know, I'd volunteer to paint it, but it's got to be fixed first. And then um, with all the construction going on, is there going to be a time when the moguls on John R um, between 12 Mile and Gardenia are going to be fixed? Um, because the big trucks that come down, now that I live off of John R, I mean, you should hear some of those trucks. They wake me up at night. They're like, you know, they're just, they're moguls. They're just bouncing off, you know, so. Just wondering if that's going to be ever scheduled to be uh, taken care of since we're doing so many road work right now anyways. Why not just throw it in the mix? So just my two cents. Thank you. And that's it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wanted to speak this evening? Good evening. My name is Dolores Mowry, and I am a little confused about the Active Adult Center when we move here. There's a lot of things that I don't understand. Um, I also understand that the administration wants to do all the finishes in our supposedly private center and you know that's not that's not acceptable we have visions also of what we would like to see done and uh, if it's supposed to be a private area for the ACC, then why are we not picking our own finishes? So I'm a little bit confused and would like a, a little bit of confirmation as to why we are not getting what we were told in the very beginning that we were going to have. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else, anyone else who wanted to speak this evening? Hi, congratulations, Tony. Thank you. I'm Suzanne Patton from 30472 Alger, Madison Heights, Michigan. I'm here for the Active Adult Center, and we would just like to really make sure that we have a council representative and an alternate that can attend our board meetings. They're on the third Tuesday at one o'clock every month. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wanted to speak this evening? All right, seeing no one, I am going to uh, close public comment. Was there any comments that were sent in? Okay. All right, thank you. So first up we have uh, communications. We have the resignation of Toya Aaron from the Human Relations and Equity Commission. Can I have a motion from council, please? Your Honor, Councilor I Rebecca. move that we accept the resignation of Toya Aaron from the Human Relations and Equity Commission, declare the seat. Well, I don't have to do that, no. period. All right, thank you. Is there support? Your Honor, I'll support. Thank you, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, Councilwoman Aaron, I'm going to ask you to abstain from voting on this, please. So is there any type of discussion? Your Honor, do I? I think I do have to say and declare the seat vacant, correct? Yeah, okay. Yes. Declare the seat vacant. Thank you. Okay. And support agrees? Yes. Okay. 
All right, is there any other discussion? Seeing none, I ask all except for Councilwoman Aaron to please um, indicate uh, yes for approval or no for not. So if you are uh, want to approve this, please say yes. 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 All who disagree say no. Motion carries, thank you. All right, next up we have reports. First one is from the city manager, a resolution to declare Arbor Day. Mr. Marsh. With the city council's support to incre increase the commitment to strengthen and improve the city's tree canopy, city staff applied for and was awarded Tree City USA status for the second year in a row. Tree City USA is a national-wide movement that provides the framework necessary for communities to manage and expand their public trees. One of the standards required for the application is that City Council adopts a resolution proclaiming Arbor Day with a celebration. Therefore, the City will observe Arbor, Arbor Day on Friday, April the 29th. To celebrate and acknowledge Arbor Day, the City will provide and offer a limited number of trees through our citywide neighborhood tree planting program, which was new last year. This is an annual first come first serve program that replaces trees throughout the city. The number of trees planted annually is based on available funding. Additional requests above and beyond this will be added to the wait list in order, to in order received. And I would like to say a special thank you to Sean Ballantyne. Um, through his efforts, earlier today we found out that we were awarded an additional $10,000 grant that will be used for this Arbor Day tree planting celebration. So it will plant about 40 trees, so people that are on the wait list already. Um, staff and I recommend that City Council adopt this resolution and declare Friday, April the 29th of 2022 as Arbor Day in Madison Heights. All right, thank you. What is the wish of Council? Your, Your Honor. Honor. Uh, Council Rohrbach? I move that uh, Council adopts uh, the resolution for Arbor Day, declaring Arbor Day April 21, 29th, 29th 2022. <laughs> All right, thank you. Is there a second? Your Honor. Right? Uh, just a second. Support. Thank you. Motion, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Your Honor. Um, you all know that um, trees are my, my jam. <laughs> I love trees. I'm so excited. Um, you know, just over the course of this past year, we've planted almost 500 trees in the city of Madison Heights. 500 trees. It's amazing. It is remarkable what we've done over the last several years. In, in, no little effort to um, the city administration, to Sean Ballantyne in particular. He works very hard on the, the tree program um, and our DPS. They just do a phenomenal job. So um, I just want to say thank you um, to everybody for uh, making this continue to happen and the commitment that we have as a city to becoming a greener and more sustainable city. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And Council Warbach, thank you for all your efforts as well with this. It was something that I started and then you took over and you've done an amazing job with it, so thank you. Um, are there any other comments regarding the proclamation? All right, seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion <clears throat> carries. Next up we have from the police chief, the narcotics enforcement team, high intensity drug trafficking area agreement and resolution. Ms. Marsh. The City of Madison Heights currently has a police officer assigned to the Oakland County Narcotics Enforcement Team. Oakland County has applied for a grant from the United States Office of National Drug Control Policy for funding of $115,000 to reimburse, reimburse net participating agencies for eligible law enforcement officer overtime cost. If Oakland County grants net this award, the funds re will reimburse the City of Madison Heights up to $5,250 for qualifying expenses. Therefore, staff and I recommend that City Council adopt the resolution and approve the 2022 High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Subrecipient Agreement between the County of Oakland and the City of Madison Heights and authorize the City Manager and the City Clerk to sign on behalf of the City. All right, thank you. Uh, what is the wish of Council? Your Honor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that the uh, council pass the net high intensity drug trafficking area HIDA agreement and resolution. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Your Honor. I'll, I'll second. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Your Honor. Please. You know, if, uh, if the chief could indulge uh, for just a few minutes to kind of go over some of the bas basics with this, uh, I think this is a fantastic opportunity. Um, this kind of goes hand in hand, if I understand correctly, uh, that when we started the, um, 
the, uh, the human trafficking um, organization in here in Madison Heights. And um, so please go ahead. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, real quick, just to go over it, we, every year we accept this grant as a general purpose for um, furthering, getting some overtime back from our high intensity <coughs> drug trafficking areas, um, the hotels, especially in the human trafficking. But what's changed this year and made it a little bit different is that, you know, a few years ago, council reapproved the bringing back of our special investigations unit. Um, that has taken off and we have a lot of investigations that we're doing to the point where because we had to pull some personnel back due to shortages on the road, we have now gotten into a combined effort as council is aware with uh, the Oakland County Narcotics Enforcement Team. So we have expanded our reach and expanded what we're doing to include all the drug trafficking that goes naturally with the human trafficking. Um, so. This grant will help us, you know, again, approve, approve and pay for overtime, as well as, as we add additional officers in, which is our plan to do it, add at least one more, maybe two officers to this program, once we're up to full strength, um, it will bring more money and more resources to bear in the city of Madison Heights. So, thank right. you. Thank you very much, Chief. Are there any other questions, comments, council? <clears throat> All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries, thank you. Uh, D3 is from the city manager, resolution demanding the impacted Gliwa member communities not be responsible for the city of Highland Park's Gliwa death. Mrs. Marsh. It's a short little comment, but I think I'm gonna read the resolution instead because it's more detailed. Whereas the City of Madison Heights received water services from the Great Lakes Water Authority and are paying members of the GLWA. The State of Michigan has directed the role of the GLWA in providing water to the services of the City of Highland Park. The State of Michigan requested that the Detroit Water and Sewer, DWSD, provide emergency water services to Highland Park because the State of Michigan determined that Highland Park's water treatment plant was creating a public health risk to the residents. On November 12th of 2012, the state of Michigan stated that the repairs to this water treatment plant were to be completed within three to four days. Neither the state of Michigan nor the city of Highland Park repaired the water treatment plant and it remains shuttered to this day. The city of Highland Park has paid less than 1% of their water services that have been charged to them from the GLWA since 2012. Since that time, Highland Park has accumulated over $54 million in debt to GLIWA for both water and sewer services. Should this payment pattern continue, the debt will rise to almost $61 million by the end of fiscal year 2023. As of today, the $54 million debt to Highland Park um, has been allocated to the paying members of the system. Madison Heights is one of these paying members. Madison Heights has been allocated $60,900, of which $6,600 will be required to be paid this year. Therefore, I'm asking City Council to support a resolution to demand that the State of Michigan intervene and require the Great Lakes Water Authority to not require the 87 paying members to pick up the City of Highland Park's debt, that the City of Madison Heights will not pay any towards the Highland Park debt, um, for fiscal year 2023 or beyond, that the City of Madison Heights City Council hereby request that the City of Madison Heights or the State of Michigan become directly involved in solving this dispute. The City of Madison Heights City Council hereby will be requesting that the State of Michigan reimburse all member communities for any money that had been paid towards this debt since 2017. The City of Madison Heights City Council hereby also will be imploring the City state of Michigan to develop a long-term infrastructure solution to address the water and sewer issues in Highland Park and the Madison Heights City Council will be calling upon the state and the legislature to create a system in which this situation of non-payment and communities being charged for non-payment cannot happen in the future. City Council hereby will be requesting that straight state legislatures and our Oakland County Commissioners call on the state of Michigan to not require impacted member partner communities to pay the city of Highland Park's debt to the GLIWA or, and that the state of Michigan reimburse the debt amounts already paid. Thank you. What is the wish of council? Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. 
Uh, I move that we approve the resolution that demands that the state of Michigan and the Great Lakes Water Authority do not require the 87 paying member communities to pay for the city of Highland Park's debt to G GL Gilwa? I don't know. How, how do we how do we say the acronym? But <clears throat> further, uh, I'd include in my motion that uh, this resolution will commit Madison Heights to not paying the debt uh, at all, uh, and not just uh, the sixty six hundred allocated this year, but the sixty thousand nine hundred dollars that we're being asked for. All right. Thank you. Is there a second? Your Honor. That's what we're Second. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Your Honor, I just had a quick question, uh, maybe for the city manager. It wasn't the city of Highland Park that was requesting it. Wasn't it Gliwa that did it, or was it a combination? That's requesting what, the payment? Yes. The Gliwa is requiring the member communities to pay the debt that has owed to them from Highland Park because Highland Park has not paid. So they've taken the non-payment from Highland Park and spread it to all the paying communities. All right, so Glee was trying to just, right, um, making excuses for whatever that they're, they're not doing properly. Well, Glee um, was trying to collect for the money, the water that they've sent to Highland Park that Highland Park has not paid for. And, but this has been going on for how long, you said? Ten uh, years. It's gone, been going on since 2012 when the state intervened and shut down Highland Park right, water and the, plant. And, and they couldn't come up with an alternative prior to that? It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, all right, so uh, this came on my radar a week or two ago and I reached out to city manager Marsh and she said that she was going to be doing this. And um, basically it's like your neighbor isn't paying their bill and no one's following up with them. And now you have to pay your neighbor's bill. Everyone on the street has to pay the bill whether you want to or not. And um, I'm all for helping out my neighbors, uh, but not like this. So I think that um, the state needs to intervene. Highland Park, I don't know if they need to get an emergency manager in or they need a complete audit or what, but it is not our responsibility. We have enough time paying our own bills. It's not our responsibility to pay other bills. State needs to step in. Gliwa needs to figure out why it took them 10 years to get to this point and how it got so out of hand. So I will absolutely be voting in favor of this. Um, and with that, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against, say no. Motion carries. Thank you. Oh, that was it. Okay, uh, next up we have the bid award purchases uh, from the city manager. We have partners in architecture, the construction documents. Mrs. Marsh. On May 10th of 2021, City Council approved the agreement with Partners in Architecture for design development for the Civic Center Plaza and the Fire Station 2 projects. The total project fees were $170,000 and a contract for FRS for pre-construction management services was estimated to be $8,500. At that time, we explained that the total for Phase 2 for Partners was $570,000 if we move to construction document phase. We are now requesting approval for the next phase contract for partners for a total of $431,400. This includes $380,600 for partners to complete the construction documents and $50,800 for FRS for construction services, including the early bid packages that were recently presented to City Council. The contract is pending final legal engineering and staff review. Staff and I would respectfully request that Council approve moving to the construction documents and bidding stage of the contract with Partners in Architecture for $430,400 pending legal engineering and staffing review, and that needs to be part of the motion. Okay, thank you. Uh, what is the wish of Council? Your Honor. Councilor Bach. I move that Council approves moving to construction documents and bidding stage of the contract with Partners in Ar Architecture for a cost of $431,400 um, pending legal and staff review. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Your Honor, I'll second. Thank you, Councilman Fleming. Your uh, Honor. Uh, Mr. Sherman? I would ask the maker of the motion and support to agree to add engineering review as well to the motion. Certainly. Okay, okay thank you. They have, thank you. Um, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Your Honor. I'd just like to say that I think this is just an exciting, progressive move for us to make, and I'm excited to see this project going forward. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion <coughs> carries. Uh, next up, we have ordinances. We have the first reading of the ordinance 2180 from the city clerk. It's the amendment to precinct eight, the polling location. In conjunction with the recently approved precinct boundary location changes, Lamphere Schools has agreed to let the city use Page Middle School at 29615 Tawas Street as the permanent location for Precinct 8. Precinct 8 has been located at the Active Adult Center, which will not be available as a polling precinct in the future. This will enable us to include the location changes on the new voter ID cards that will be sent out due to redistricting. As required by city charter, staff recommends approval of ordinance 2180 amendment to polling locations on the first reading and scheduling the second reading for April the 25th. All right, thank you. What is the wish of council? Your Honor, council I recommend that council approve the ordinance 2180 amendment to polling location on the first reading and schedule the second reading for April 25th, 2022. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Your Honor, I'll second. Thank you. Motion has been made and, and supported. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. All right. Next up, we have uh, minutes. We have uh, from the special city council meeting on March 28th, as well as the regular city council meeting on March 28th. Uh, what is the wish of council? Uh, Your Honor. Bliss. I move that we adopt both the special council meeting minutes and regular council meeting minutes of 32822 as printed. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Your Honor. Ms. Fleming? All second. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. All right, next up we have the council appointments for the boards and commissions. These are for the terms to expire uh, November 2023. So normally what happens is in November, um, after we have our election, we have swearing in of uh, mayor and council, we have an appointment of the pro tem, and then we dedicate the next hour to um, making council appointments to the different boards and commissions. Um, when we have a situation where somebody leaves, we basically just say, okay, new person, this is what the other person had, here you go. So um, I think that's what we just did with Mr. Wright. When Mr. Fleming came on, it was a bit different because there was only a month left until we were doing the election. So Councilwoman Aaron, before um, I ask for a motion to appoint you to these five boards and commissions, that is a lot. <laughs> so um, are you, do you want all of these? Do you want one of them, four of them? Like, what are your thoughts on this so that we know what motions to be making? Your Honor, I would like to keep the library, um, the library advisory board, parks and recreation as the council alternate and the ZBA as council representative. Okay, so just to confirm, um, I am looking for a motion to appoint Councilwoman Aaron to be the council representative for the Library Advisory Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals and to be the council alternate for the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. That is correct. All right. Can I get a motion, please? Your Honor. Your Honor. Mr. Fleming? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to appoint um, council, Councilwoman uh, Toya Aaron to the Library Advisory Board Council Representative, the Zoning Board of Appeals Council, Council Representative, the Parks and Recreation Council, I mean, I'm sorry, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board Council Alternative, uh, term to expire 11-13-2023. All right, thank you. Is there support? Your Honor. Mr. Bliss? We both said okay. it. Okay. You Your Honor, I support. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All right. Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. Thank you. Next up, then, we have the um, vacancies for the Active Adult Center and for the Historical Commission. So I'm going to open this up really to... Um, 
guess pretty much anyone, but I'm gonna do this in order of seniority. So with the Active Adult Center, I believe, Mr. Soltis, that you are the alternate rep on that. That's correct. Okay, yeah, so. I, I, I'm sorry. Do, do you wanna stay as the alternate? Do you wanna move into the council so the, rep? This is what I, this is what I recommend. Um, so well, I hear AAC leadership. Um, I'd like to do this, and I want to talk to Mr. Sherman if we can, do all three in one swoop. So I want to resign as alternate. Um, I want to um, put forth uh, Mr. Quinn as the um, chairperson, and then there's the alternate, uh, Mr. Fleming. Okay. Um, I, I think it's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Your Honor. Uh, I, I don't know. I was asking the city manager whether it's a mayor's appointment. I don't. I don't know what. Well, this is. Or not. Well, these are council. These, these are council. So yeah. These, yeah. yeah, these are council appointments. These are council seats. Um, so. So that's my question, if Mr. Sherman. Can I do all three in one swoop? I. You can't. You can, but there may be other names in nomination. I, but that's. I, I, let's let's right. do this cleaner. Let's do this cleaner. So let's. I thought that was pretty clean. Depth. Back. It sounds well. What I was going to do was ask you if you wanted to be the alternate or if you wanted to be the council rep. Um, it sounds like you don't even want to be on this board anymore. Well, I, I can't. Like the, you know, it's the. They have the meetings in the daytime, and I just I wouldn't be able to make it. Okay. So then, um, I think first thing we need to do is we would, I would say we accept your resignation. From your alternate position. Mr. Sherman, so, can we do that? Your then, Honor, yeah. okay. Yeah, first motion would be in order to accept Councilman Soltis's resignation as, as uh, the alternate on the Active Adult Center. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to accept the resignation of Councilman Soltis from the Active Adult Center, Representative Alternate? Your Honor. I move that we accept the resignation of Mr. Soltis from the Active Adult Center as council alternate. Thank you. Uh, can I get second? Your Honor, a second. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Resignation accepted. Thank you. So we'll do a slight twist to what I was planning on doing. So what I was going to do was ask you as the representative, um, and then I was going to go through with whatever the empty spot was, whether it was the alternate or the council rep to seniority, which would be Mr. Bliss. So Mr. Bliss, are you interested in being the, the council representative or alternate for the Active Adult Center? Your Honor, I, I serve on a lot of boards right now. That's a great one. I'm honestly more interested in helping out in a greater role with the Historical Commission uh, there's a family legacy at play there, and I'd, I'd like to devote my time there if that's, if there are willing candidates. So. Okay, so we're not at historical yet. No. <laughs> that will be next. We're doing this alphabetically. So next in seniority mm -hmm. is Councilor Rohrbach. Are you interested, Councilor Rohrbach, in the council representative or councilor alternate role? Um, you know, I do have a number of council representative okay. seats that I'm already filling, and I, don't, I think we have some wonderful people that can take that role. Your okay. Honor. So next in point of oh. order is it? Are we supposed to make a motion according to Robert's rule of order, or can we go according to seniority? Just a, for clarification, or maybe a point of clarification. Uh, the motion, Sherman? Your Honor, a motion would be in order to appoint any member of council who is willing to serve as council representative and and another council member to serve as council alternate on the active adult center. I don't think it has to be by seniority at all. Okay. I, well, I, did I already make that motion? Well, you made a motion to to resign from the alternate seat, so that seat is now open. And then, did you make a subsequent motion to <clears throat> appoint someone else? I well, that's what I was asking you. One, one swoop, all three, and you, I thought you said yes. Well, but. first you resigned, and what was the what was your motion, Councilman Soltis? After resigning, it was yes. to appoint um, Mr. Wright is the um, chairperson, and then Mr. Fleming is the alternate. If, if Councilman Wright, Councilor Wright is willing to serve and, and Councilman Fleming is willing to serve as the alternate, mm -hmm. yeah, sure, why not? Your Honor, I'll second. Okay, uh, motion has been made and seconded uh, to have Councilor Wright as the representative and 
Councilman Fleming as the alternate. Is there any discussion? Uh, Your Honor. Please. Uh, just to, I suppose, a question or a clarification. Uh, I know I'm the youngest member of council, but who, who is our most, who's our oldest member of council? Uh, as it's the active adult center board, do we have a member that can serve that can go there and participate? Is that? I believe it's Mr. Solstice. <laughs> Your Honor, I, I'm actually the oldest. I disagree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Your Honor. I'm older than them. Um, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wright. I mean, uh, one of the things we strive to do is be inclusive, and we don't want to, I don't think we should consider age. Um, that's borderline talking about ageism. Like somebody being too old or too young, we're all qualified. That's all that matters. Your Honor. Councilor Arbaugh. Um, I think uh, I think one of the questions that we heard tonight was, um, or one of the requests was that uh, that whoever is on council as rep or um, alternate be available at 1 p.m. every month um, on the third Tuesday. Um, our our council are those that are, um, you know. On, on the deck right now, are you guys available to be there on at the meeting times and dates? Yes. Yeah. And Your Honor, and do you accept that nomination? Yes. Okay. okay, so Mr. Fleming, we haven't really heard anything from you. Um, you were actually next in seniority and then Mr. Wright and then Mrs. Aaron, who's already, because of the way this went, this will be one of the few times that you'll be higher up in seniority. Um, are, do you, would you like the alternate role? No, I'll accept the alternate role on, on this. Okay. Yep. All right, so it looks like, Mr. Wright, you, obviously you would take the representative role. Yes. Okay. Um, is there any other discussion? All right, and both of you will be able to make these meetings. I just want to clarify that because that was specifically requested this evening. Yes, I can make the meetings. All right, so the motion on the table is to have Councillor Wright as the council representative for the Active Adult Center and Councilman Fleming as the alternate. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. All right, um, historical commission. I guess since we're not going through seniority or anything, uh, who wants to be the representative for that? Can I get a motion, please? Your Honor. Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion that Mark Bliss be appointed as council representative for the Historical Commission. All right, and I believe, Mr. Bliss, that you are the alternate mm -hmm. currently? Yes, yeah. Uh, in, in the same motion, if we could include to declare my alternate seat vacant, I think that would suffice with the city attorney. That would be fine, Your Honor. And declare his alternate seat vacant. All right, thank you. Can I get uh, support? Your Honor, I'll support. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those against say no. Motion carries. And then we now have the alternate for the historical commission. If I can get a motion for that. Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. Uh, I move that we appoint Councilman Fleming as the alternate to the historical commission. I believe he served on it in the past. Yeah. I'll accept. All right, is there support? Your Honor. Honor. Mr. Support. Bliss. Okay, so motion has been made and seconded. Uh, and Mr. Fleming, you are accepting it. Is there any discussion? All right, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those against say no. Nope. All right, motion carries. We now have these five boards uh, covered. Yay. Um, that is the end of our regular meeting. I now invite closing comments, starting with our newest member, <laughs> Councilwoman Aaron. Thank you, Your Honor. I want to first thank Council and the City of Madison Heights for accepting me as the new City Council person. Um, I'm looking forward to a great working relationship with all of you. I have to say that sitting here is not only an honor, but it's a privilege that I will not take for granted. When I think about this, no, this is not how I had desired on obtaining this seat. But we all know that God has a purpose and a plan that we don't understand, only he does. With that being said, I want to just share that I may not have been very close with Mayor Pro Temp Corbett as many of the other council members here, 
but I do know that I have some big shoes to fill. And after listening over the last couple of weeks and reading uh, Mr. Corbett's obituary, I have learned that he was a very intelligent man, a very smart man, and that should not be um, unexpected considering that he graduated from the University of Detroit Mercy, and so did I. <laughs> so um, it's said that, you know, Bob had a listening ear, he was witty, he knew how to make you feel comfortable in his presence, and I, I believe that I share some of those same qualities. Understand, I'm not saying by any means, am I Bob Corbett? No, I am not. <laughs> and I can never take his place. But what I will say is that as I serve out the remainder of his term, like Bob, I want to make certain that I do what's best for all of you. I want to make certain that, you know, Bob sat on a lot of um, boards and he advocated for what was right and he shared his thoughts and his opinions and he even told us when things were wrong and I desire to do the same. I want to serve out his term with humbleness, with integrity, and with grace. And I will never, ever take for granted how and why I'm here. So I want to just give God praise and thank him for this opportunity. I want to thank Bob's wife, Linda, for allowing us as residents of the city of Madison Heights to share her husband with her over the last 20 years. I know this is a difficult time. You all are in my prayers. May God bless you and grace you. Be blessed. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem uh, Yes, Your Honor. Uh, first off, thank you so much to my peers for their faith in me to finish out Mayor Pro Tem's term, or Mayor Pro Tem Corbett's term as Mayor Pro Tem. Um, it's a responsibility that I won't take lightly. Uh, I'll do my best to serve out his term, not my term, but his term with the same honor, passion, and generosity as he served the city for a couple of decades. Uh, also, I want to say that while I wish the circumstances were different, uh, I do want to welcome Councilwoman Toya Aaron to council. Uh, it's not an easy job to be appointed to council. So especially when the seat that you're sitting in had you know, a, a Bob Corbett in it for many years and you're walking onto those boards. Um, but, but I believe Councilwoman Aaron is up for the challenge. Uh, you can tell that she has a passion for this city and I know that she's gonna leverage that passion to rise to the occasion and serve our citizens well. You know, this is a, <laughs> historically unusual time for our council. I, I can say that I'm the new uh, council rep to the Historical Commission. Um, we have the, I mean, this is, this is historically unusual. Not only do we have three appointed members of council, but I believe this is the first time in decades that a majority of council is in their first term in office. That inspires quite a challenge as we all learn to navigate this uh, together. Uh, and that's in the midst of what's gonna be the biggest single investment that our city has made with the Civic Center Campus Project that we're actively you know, approving bids for. So look, I've watched through the years as council has weathered many storms, um, you know, whether it's Meyer or Sakra, I mean, there's, there's been so many through the years uh, that I, you know, was privy to watching in the audience and every single time we got through it stronger than when it started. This won't be any different. Uh, it will, however, require all of us to step up, both our new members who have the difficult task of getting up to speed as quickly as possible, learning as much as they possibly can, and finding new and exciting ideas to be able to grow and, and, and change the city in positive ways. Uh, but also those of us who now find ourselves as the you know, veterans, the mentors on council, uh, you know, it, it's now up, up to us to fill the shoes of the folks who came before us and uh, make sure that we're here to offer 
you know, whatever sage advice we might have, uh, despite the fact that I think, you know, at least with, with me as concerned, uh, sage advice it depends on when you catch me during the day. But uh, I, I will do my best, uh, and, and frankly, I'm excited because as much as there are some difficulties with this, I believe this is also the first council in the history of the city, and, and there are historians in the audience who can correct me if I'm wrong, but that have every member of this council has school-aged children, which is a unique perspective that I hope that we can dive into as we're making not just the investments in our library, but also the investments in our parks. Uh, and I would just encourage encourage everybody that that's watching at home. Uh, you have a you have a lot of new voices here on council. Uh, this is a great time to reach out if you have any ideas, if you have any asks, if you have any wants or wishes. Um, this is a council that's really actively uh, trying to find some new ideas and push through some great changes for the city of Madison Heights. So don't miss your opportunity to call up one of your new council members. That's it, Your Honor. Thank you, Council Wright. Uh, and your older council members as well. Uh, I would like to uh, <laughs> congratulate um, first uh, Councilwoman Erin. Um, you know, I think back into November and when this race was, uh, you know, the election was over and we thought it was done. And like, you know, as you, know, as you spoke to, it's amazing how things can change quickly. So congratulations to you. Uh, congratulations to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bliss. So uh, despite my vote, I still wish you the best, and I think you're going to be a great mentor and provide a lot of um, knowledge for us all. Um, on a lighter note and an awesome note to speak about expanding our horizons, um, our city's second annual Juneteenth event is coming up. I will be overseeing our um, barbecue competition this year. So if you think you're a grill master, come talk to us, or if you want to be a vendor. Otherwise, just remember to be kind. You might not agree with everything that each other says, but we're all humans, like Mark alluded to. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a child of God too, and we're all the same. So let's remember that when we, and give each other a little bit of grace. So be kind, and that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Sherman. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I also would uh, like to welcome uh, Council, Councilwoman Aaron uh, on her appointment, congratulations. We all look forward to, uh, to working together and I concur with all of your beautiful statements uh, about Councilman Corbett, or late Mayor Pro Tem Corbett. Um, you know, I, I don't think the people in the audience, uh, people on TV could see it, but, but uh, Councilwoman Aaron's family and friends were all here in the audience and just like when, just like when, when Councilor Right was appointed. It was a beautiful thing to see everybody here sharing in, in, the, in, the, in the joy and in the accomplishment of being part of this council. So we all look forward to, to working with you. Congratulations to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Mark Bliss on his appointment. And, um, and I concur with, I echo the comments made by everybody so far tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Marsh? Um, just to echo the same comments, I want to welcome Councilwoman Erin to the uh, council table. Look forward to working with you. We've already started getting busy meeting because it's coming up on budget season. Um, we are having a special council meeting next Monday to go through the budget. Um, so if anybody needs something to do, you're more than welcome to show up. It starts <laughs> at 6. And um, congratulations to Mark for being Mayor Pro Tem. Um, and I think that is it for now. All right, thank you. Anything from the clerk's office this evening? Just the same, echo everybody's comments, and um, welcome to Councilwoman Erin, and congratulations to Mayor Pro Tem Bliss. Councilor Rohrbach. Um, welcome, Councilwoman Erin. I'm thrilled that you're with us, and I'm excited to see um, great things in the future. I think we can all work together to do some really amazing things for the city, because I know we all have that on our hearts and on our minds to do good things for our city because we're all here because we love the city. We love it. We love each other. We love the people that live here. And we want to do the right by you. Um, so speaking of good things, um, I just want to note that the um, mural at um, um, one of our parks, 
Huffman, thank you. <laughs> my brain all of a sudden. Um, the mural at Huffman Park, we're wanting to paint a mural on the building, the entire building of Huffman Park. We are taking submissions from artists for um, designs for that, for that mural. Um, wide range of ideas and budgets that have been put forward. We're taking those submissions through April 30th. If you or someone you know is a wonderful artist and may have some ideas for that park mural, please bring them our way because we would love to see them. Um, speaking of parks, um, I'm excited about um, working together with you on the uh, Parks and Recreation Board. Um, I love that board, I love the work that we do, and I'm really excited because um, the Rosie's Park North parking, or the nice play structure on Rosie's um, North is in progress, and every, just about every day, my family and I walk down there, and they're like, ooh, it's getting closer, it's getting, it's gonna be beautiful, it's the same, um, one I believe it's at Edison Park has the same structure, so if you want a sneak peek, go to Edison, and that's the same one that's gonna be there at Rosie's, um, and hopefully we'll have it in time for the beginning of summer, and be able to really enjoy it over the course of the, that season. Um, I was gonna say Juneteenth, but thank you. Um, and uh, I also wanted to mention, John R. Road is going to be worked on this year, so <laughs> hold on to your hats. <laughs> so it'll be exciting, everything happens all at once, but it is, is gonna be worked on. Um, and I wanna say thank you to Mike McFall for coming to introduce himself to the council. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Mr. Fleming. First of all, I want to say uh, congratulations to Toya Aaron, our newest councilwoman, to our council. Um, I think it's something that uh, a good, great addition to our city council. And uh, congratulations to uh, Mayor Pro Tip, no, uh, Mark Bliss. Congratulations to you too. Um, I have just one comment uh, tonight: is that um, this this April is uh, has lots of holidays. Uh, this uh, whole entire month is the month of Ramadan. Uh, along we have uh, the Jewish faith has Passover and Easter is coming up before the next city council meeting So I wish everybody a happy holiday for all those holidays and, and that's all my comments tonight Thank you Mr. Soltis. Yes, thank you your honor. Uh, congratulations councilwoman Aaron um, We have the support of all the council and staff um, We're looking forward to working with you in the future. So congratulations. Uh, I want to recognize the longest serving councilwoman, Marjean Scott. Thank you. You're always welcome here. You can even sit down if you want. We'll switch out. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> just for a brief time, right? Uh, and uh, you know what? I want to thank uh, the police chief. Uh, him and I finished our second Little League basketball um, season. Uh, the first one was cut by COVID, but then this one we we made it through it. Um, I think the kids had a great experience. Um, at this age, you know, we told them, don't worry about win or lose. Um, you're just the first time you're playing organized sports. Um, you know, you have to learn about uh, respect and, 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 um, and hard work. And, and so they did, they, they gave their heart uh, and soul in it. Um, I said, don't, again, don't worry about the score. It doesn't reflect um, anything about you at this point. Uh, just as long as you had fun um, and you you improved and so um, again I want to thank the chief for helping us out and and he said that he's not doing it again but uh, I'm gonna have to <laughs> I'm gonna do a little arm twisting on that one um, twist uh, yeah because his, his raise is coming up but no I'm just kidding <laughs> that's all yeah thank you all right thank you um, I too want to Welcome Councilwoman Aaron and congratulate uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bliss. Um, it, it's gonna be a large learning curve. Um, you know, this, this council, our senior people have less than a decade. Um, so we will be relying on each other. We will be relying on staff. We will be relying on our retired council people. I already reached out to, uh, to let Mrs. Scott know that. Um, you know, so there's gonna be a large learning curve, but the staff does an amazing job. And, um, you know, we just, uh, we just need to keep moving forward. We might have some different ideas of what we want, but we all want what's good for the city. So we just need to keep pushing forward. With that, um, it's great that, uh, that Councilwoman Erin has already started her training with Mrs. Marsh. Um, so 
I mean, that's something that all new council people go through, and it really, it does help. Uh, it does help with that. Um, want to remind everybody not to speed. I've been getting complaints again about speeding. Um, you know, it's not feasible to put a police officer on every corner. It's, everyone just needs to pay attention to the street signs, uh, put away your phones, watch out for walkers, bikers. You know, the weather is turning nicer. We're seeing more people. So please just be very cognizant of your speed and your surroundings. Um, I also want to wish everybody a happy Easter Passover Ramadan or whatever it is that you are celebrating. Um, as Councilman Fleming mentioned, uh, the spring holidays are upon us and I know that Councillor Wright and Councillor Rohrbach both mentioned Juneteenth and I guess there's the rib uh, contest, but I'm uh, excited to see what you are doing for the spring holidays as well and the other projects that uh, the HREC is working on. So um, I think we've got, <laughs> I keep saying this, we have a good group here. Nobody is to leave, everyone is to stay. Um, and uh, yeah, and, you know, and we're gonna get through this. Our next meeting is actually going to be on April 18th. It is the budget meeting, but our next regular council meeting is going to be April 25th. The time is now 8.46 and this meeting is adjourned. Good night.